Welcome back to Deep Learning and today we want to talk a bit about gated recurrent units, a simplification of the LSTM cell. Pierre Jens tells us that the stuff that works best is really simple. So again a neural network, gated recurrent units. So the idea here is that the LSTM is of course great, but it has a lot of parameters and it's kind of difficult to train. So Joel came up with the gated recurrent unit and it was introduced in 2014 for statistical machine translation. You could argue it's a variant of the LSTM, but it's simpler and it has fewer parameters. So this is the general setup. You can see we don't have two different memories like in the LSTM. We only have one hidden state, but one similarity to the LSTM, the hidden state flows only along a linear change so you only see multiplications and additions here and again as in the Elman cell we produce from the hidden state the outputs. So let's have a look into the ideas that Cho had in order to propose this groove cell. Well it takes the concepts from the LSTMs and it controls the memory by gates. The main difference is there's no additional cell state, so the memory only operates directly via the hidden state. And the update of the state can be divided into four steps. There's a reset gate that is controlling the influence of the previous hidden state. Then there is an update gate that introduces newly computed updates. So the next step proposes an updated hidden state, which is then used to update the hidden state. So how does this work? Well first we determine the influence of the previous hidden state and this is done by a sigmoid activation function. Here we again have a matrix, we concatenate input and previous hidden state, multiply it with a matrix and add some bias and feed it to the sigmoid activation function which produces some reset value RT. Next we produce some ZT and this is essentially the update proposal on the new hidden state. So this is again produced by a sigmoid function where we concatenate the last hidden state and the input vector, multiply it with a matrix WZ and add some bias. Next we propose the update so we combine the input and the reset state and this is done in the following manner. So the update proposal H tilde is produced by a tangens hyperbolicus where we take the reset gate times the last hidden state. So we essentially remove entries that we don't want to see from the last hidden state and concatenate XT, multiply with some matrix WH and add some bias BH. This is then fed to a tangent superbolicus to produce an update proposal. Now with the update proposal we go to the update gate and the update gate controls the combination of the old state and the proposed state. So we compute the new state by multiplying 1 minus ZT, you remember this is the intermediate variable that we computed earlier with the old state plus ZT times, and again this is a pointwise multiplication, times the proposed update. So essentially the sigmoid function that produced the ZT is now used to select whether to keep the old information from the old state or to update it with information from the new state. This then gives the new hidden state and with the new hidden state we produce the new output and notice again that we are omitting the transformation matrices in this step. So we write this as sigmoid of HT but there's actually transformation matrices and biases involved that we are not noting down here. So this then gives the final output yt hat. Some remarks. The add is essential for the preservation of the error in the backpropagation and the gates allow capturing diverse timescales and remote dependencies. The units 
are able to learn short-term dependencies by learning restrictive gates. So if we have an RT close to zero, it will ignore the previous hidden state. We can also learn long-term dependencies by having restrictive update gates. So here we have the ZT close to zero, which means we ignore new input. The gates then have varying rhythm depending on the type of information. Now you'd say, okay, now we have RNN units, we have LSTM units and grooves, so which one should we take? So let's have a short recap. The simple RNNs, we had gradient-based training, which was difficult due to vanishing and exploding gradients, so we had problems with long-term dependencies. Short-term dependencies were quite good, but they could potentially hide the long-term dependencies due to exponentially small gradients. And the hidden state is overwritten in each time step. Then we had the LSTMs and grooves. Both of them introduced the gates that then operate on the memory. In the LSTM, we were splitting this into cell state and hidden state. In the groove, we only have the hidden state. Both of them have memories that are completely linear, which helps us with the long-term dependencies. So the similarities here, of course, are that the information is controlled via gates and the ability to capture dependencies of different timescales. The additive calculation of the state preserves the error during backpropagation, so we can do more efficient training. And of course, there are also differences. The LSTMs have separate hidden and cell state, so they control the exposure of the memory content through an output gate, and the input and the forget gate work independently, so they could potentially do different things. So new memory content is independent of the current memory. In the groove, we have combined hidden and cell state. So we have full exposure of the memory content without control. There is one common update gate that produces the new hidden state with our variable ZT that essentially then decides to either use the old state or to use the proposed update. So the new memory content depends on the current memory. You can also compare them in applications because you may ask, so what should we use? In reference three, you see an empirical evaluation of gated recurrent neural networks on sequence modeling, and they compare the simple RNN, LSTMs, and GRU networks, and the tasks were polyphonic music modeling and speech signal modeling. Results indicate that the gated recurrent units clearly outperformed the regular recurrent unit, and the comparison between the GRU and the LSTM was not conclusive. They have a similar performance. So you could argue both of them are very well suited for sequence modeling. One has fewer parameters, but for the tasks presented in this paper, it didn't make a big difference. So both of them are viable options. And there is very little theory behind the best solutions that we have at the moment. Well, next time in deep learning, we want to talk a bit about generating sequences because we now have recurrent neural networks and the recurrency can of course not be used just to process long sequences, but of course we can also generate sequences and we will look a bit into sequence generation. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you like this video and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.